It's no secret that learning languages is good for your brain. It can improve your memory, your critical thinking skills, it can increase cultural understanding, but I noticed that there's a set of other changes that my brain went through after learning multiple languages, and some of them are shocking. A brain's default language. So I speak six languages and have spent time learning a couple others in my life, but abandoned them sooner or later. And one of the changes that I noticed is that my brain automatically chooses a default language. A default language is a language that you kind of use as an instrument to reach into other foreign languages. So for example, my mother tongue is Czech and it's been my default language for quite some time. But in the past five years, as I started traveling more and perfecting different languages, I noticed that the default slowly started switching from Czech to English. So for example, now my thoughts are being uh, thought out and organized completely in English, which I find pretty strange since it's not my first language. I reckon it's also so intuitive because most of the content that I consume is in English. Most of the resources that I've used for learning languages were in English. So when I'd start like translating, you know, or annotating, I'd automatically start doing it in English. And so especially when I spend longer periods of time outside of the Czech Republic, I even start losing the sense of my mother tongue a little bit. Obviously not entirely because I haven't been abroad for that long. But yeah, overall nowadays, I just feel like when I speak Czech, it's just so unnatural. Like the way I form sentences, or maybe it just feels weird to me because I'm not used to speaking it on a daily basis, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, I definitely stutter a little bit when speaking Czech. On the tip of my tongue. Have you ever wanted to say a word but just couldn't remember how to say it and it's like it was right in front of you and you could almost reach it but you just for the love of God could not remember how to say it? If yes, chances are that you probably speak more than one language pretty well. I was watching this video by uh, Phoenix Hall who actually inspired me to make this video and he was talking about how apparently this happens to multilinguals way more often than it happens to people who speak only one language for example. The thing that makes this so weird though is that sometimes you won't remember the word that you're trying to say in any of the languages that you speak. So, for example, the other day uh, in Japanese class, I was trying to say the word uh, kokesha, which means successor, but I couldn't remember how to say it in Japanese, and I also couldn't remember how to say successor in English, or in Czech for that matter. And then my brain just like completely shut off and uh, I vomited all, all over the classroom. No, I'm joking, but you get me, right? <laughs> I think this is something that we have to keep in mind as language learners that once you learn a language, it doesn't just get firmly stored somewhere in your brain. You have to constantly revisit it and cultivate it. Because it's true that unless you put an active effort into maintaining the foreign language or languages that you've learned, you're gonna gradually start forgetting them. One of the reasons that I don't call myself a polyglot is because I would feel like a fraud because I feel like I don't speak all of my languages 100% fluently at all times. Like for example now, uh, I've been in Japan for five months, so I haven't spoken Spanish in about five or six months. So right now if somebody just came up to me and wanted to have a full-on conversation in Spanish with me, even though I would understand everything they're saying to me, it would be really difficult for me to respond or like at least form long sentences. Imposter words and grammar. Sometimes a word from one language will try to sneak their way in into another language. It, it's a nasty thing that words do sometimes. Like I made this mistake a couple times where I was trying to say the number two in Chinese, which is pronounced R, but I pronounced it as Ni, which is the Japanese pronunciation of number two. But it's a sound that also exists in Chinese because Ni means you. So it's like, it's a mistake that you immediately notice that you said it wrong, but you just blurt it out anyways. Or like with Spanish and Portuguese, it typically happens a lot. Like this one time I just met a Spanish speaking person and I was trying to say nice to meet you, uh, which would be mucho gusto. But instead I said mucho placer, which is how you would say it in Portuguese. Muito prazer is nice to meet you in Portuguese. So I was like, I said mucho placer and they were like, uh, did you mean mucho gusto? And I was like, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. Those are like the most embarrassing moments. But hold your horses and hold your frogs, guys, because this can, this can happen with grammar as well. Something that happens quite a lot to me is that in English, we can say that something feels a certain way. So it feels nice, it feels wrong, it feels great. And so uh, a couple times I was trying to say that while speaking Czech, where this grammar structure doesn't exist, you can't say, Cítím to skvěle. Je to skvělý pocit. So instead of 
it feels great, you would say it's a great feeling. Or in Japanese, you would generally use the structure a therefore B. Whereas in many cases in European languages you would say B because A. So like My dog ate my homework, therefore I couldn't turn it in. Whereas in European languages without trying to put an emphasis or on anything specific, you would normally say I couldn't turn in my homework because my stupid dog ate it. So that's why also when I was starting Japanese, I wanted to use because so bad all the time because I was just used to it. Or another example in Chinese, you would say, which would be, I went to buy him a book, but in Chinese, you put the past tense on the verb to buy, whereas in English, you put the past tense on the verb to go. So you, you say, I went to buy him a book, but in Chinese, it's more like, I go, bought him a book. You know what I- I'm kind of rambling at this point as I usually do with these language themed videos but uh yeah let me know in the comments your experiences with learning languages and uh yeah I'll uh, uh I'll, I'll see you next week okay. Wachala! Nyeida seborce! Jane.